That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about AT for Brady. <laughs> Whoa. The directorial debut of Kyle Marvin, uh, which premiered at the 2023 Palm Springs International Film Festival and is being released theatrically courtesy of Paramount on February 3rd, 2023. Directorial debut? Yes. Good job, Kyle. I thought this movie was cute. It's cute in a limited fashion, but uh, it was written by Emily Halpern and Sarah Haskins, who uh, scripted Booksmart for Olivia Wilde. I'll probably go take my mom to see this. Yeah, like, I... I'll buy tickets. I think it was a really sweet movie that's like a great movie to go with your parents. Uh, I think people who enjoy football will probably like it. I don't enjoy football or know anything about it, and it was palatable. Yeah, I don't think you have to like football to like this film. And the but... four leads are obviously like, you know, legends. Well, legends, and, yeah. And fun to watch together. The story is very basic. It's these four women around the age of 80 who are obsessed with the Patriots, specifically Tom Brady. And at a point, they, one of them says, we should go to the Super Bowl. In 2017. In 2017. But they say, like, we can't afford it, which we need to talk about. Mm -hmm. They do end up getting there because the one claims she won tickets, but we find out she actually used all of her money, like maxed out a credit card, sold her car to get these tickets. They go to Houston to the Super Bowl. It's calamitous because they end up losing the tickets. They find them. They find out the tickets are fake. They still end up getting in. They ultimately get to meet Tom Brady. The Patriots win the Super Bowl. And all's well that ends well. So let's talk about the four people. So Lily Tomlin mm -hmm. plays... Lou Luella. Mm -hmm. She's the main one. She kind of started the tradition of them watching football because she ends up getting diagnosed with cancer like years prior. And while she's going through treatment, her three friends come and support her. And they sort of inadvertently start watching football. And they discover this new guy named Tom Brady. And they're like obsessed. So that's like their tradition. So then we're um, introduced to them in 2017. And she, Lily Tomlin is the one who wants to go. Mm -hmm. And it seems like she's on a fixed income, doesn't have a spouse, and her daughter, Melissa Gilbert... Sarah. Oh, sorry, Sarah, is um, sort of there and concerned about her because Lily Tomlin's character has received results from her doctor that she's afraid to open because she thinks she might have cancer again. But we find out in the end that she's healthy. Then there's Jane Fonda. Mm -hmm. Trish. What do we know about Trish? Trish is single. She's the sex bomb of the group. She's the Rue McClanahan. Mm -hmm. She is also, uh, she is ghostwriting, or not ghost, is that how you say it when you have like a pen name? She's under a pseudonym. A pseudonym. Mm -hmm. She writes like NFL erotic fan fiction. Uh, specifically for Rob Gronkowski. She's obsessed with Gronk, yeah. Mm -hmm. Who I actually know who that is. He does the Tide Pods commercials. And then there's Sally Field. Betty. Who her joke is like, bitch, I am not 80, I am 75, mm -hmm. which I think is so funny. Mm -hmm. And they all go to the Super Bowl wearing these glittered, like bedazzled jerseys. And they all say 80 for Brady in the back. But on her, she crossed out 80 and put 70. <laughs> but anyway, she's married to this, she's an academic. She's like a retired professor from MIT. So she's like brilliant in math. Married to Bob Balaban. Mm -hmm. Who's like, this Very dependent on her. Nebbish. Mm -hmm. But it's a sweet relationship. He just really depends on her and kind of doesn't really see her as like a person who needs her own interest. So that's kind of her battle is that she can't even go on this trip because he's requiring her attention. But ultimately she, there's a kind of a sweet scene where she tells him like mm -hmm. what's what and he apologizes and then tells her have fun. Lastly, we have Rita Moreno. Mm hmm Mora. Mora. She is, she has a home, but also lives in like a very fancy retirement home. Uh, her husband passed like a year ago mm -hmm. and she's really missing him. That's kind of her only main storyline. Glenn Turman is in the movie, which is lovely to see him. Sure. He kind of wants to be with her. That plot line is very short, but. Also unnecessary, but it's there. Gives her something to, a so, future. There were a lot of really sweet moments. I giggled a lot. Um, we can get into details. What didn't work for me, though, is I feel like... Well, first off, they say they can't afford to go to the Super Bowl. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, Jane Fonda's character can afford, like, a coterie of synthetic wigs and a bunch of makeup. And she's, like, a successful 
writer because when we get to the Super Bowl, her books are being sold there. People know her. Even Gronk has a copy of her book. People know her. She even does like an impromptu reading. Mm -hmm. I'm sure she's not making millions, but I, I find it hard to believe she has no money. Rita Moreno's character, I know how much these uh, retirement homes cost. And the one she's living in can't be less than like 5000 a month. Plus she owns a home. Mm -hmm. So if she owns property, that means that the government is not supplementing this retirement home. Because they would have liquidated that. Right. So she must have a ton of money somewhere. Mm -hmm. And she is dressed mm -hmm. to impress. So I can't believe she doesn't have a few thousand in her pocket. And then Sally Field is like a retired like mathematics professor professor from MIT. Her husband is still actively working in like academia of some sort. Mm -hmm. They're doing all right. They're doing yeah. all right. And I believe they live in Boston? I don't remember. I don't remember. Either. But they... I, I can't believe between the four of them, they can't scrounge up like 15 G's. Mm -hmm. And have, but also that's to been do this kind of, lifelong thing. been kind of a dream for them. They've been watching right. this for 16 years. Wouldn't you put like a couple hundred dollars away every year then? And That really threw me off. I and then know. Lily Tomlin's character, like her daughter is like, looks like a well-paid professional. An executive, darling. Yeah, something. She couldn't run you a few G's to just like make this lifelong dream come true? That really bothered me. That, she had to... Like, she had to sell her car and max out a credit card for scalps t for fake tickets. Yeah, I mean, I believe that could happen, but I, I just do, don't too. think that between the four of them, they couldn't make this lifelong thing happen. But it's like, why didn't she go on the official? Isn't I, there must I don't have ever plans of going to the Super Bowl, but I'm assuming there's an official site where you buy tickets, like everything else. Well, well and then she tells her phone like, "Hey Siri," or she no, she calls and says like. She, American Express is helping her get the tickets. Yeah. So that confused me. Like, so you used your American Express, like the concierge, and they bought you fake tickets? I don't know. But anyway, that really threw me off. Then I feel like the sort of, we don't really get to know the women that well, which is fine because then I thought, oh, this kind of should have felt like the hangover to me. Sure. I kind of wish this would have been like an R rated. I get that they want to make it wholesome because it probably would appeal to an older crowd. So that's fine. It didn't need to be raunchy. No. And it does kind of feel like The Hangover, except they're more wholesome. But it's just the ridiculous beats of it. Of course, they they end up taking drugs that they didn't realize were drugs. And of course, we know that they are going to lose the tickets well ahead of the time that and they then, do. And then, yeah, it's very... You can totally predict where it's all going. So Sally Field... So they all have their own little adventure when they get to Houston. Mm -hmm. So Sally Field ends up entering, like... A hot wings contest being run by Guy Fieri. Solely because she's looking to eat barbecue. Just because she's hungry. She joins us. And then apparently she doesn't have like taste buds or something. So that's how she's able to win this contest because she can't feel the heat. But then she says later she could. That was at weird. The, at the very end, the last one was hard for her. So the, that's her main, kind of her main thing in Houston. Then Jane Fonda meets Harry Hamlin's mm -hmm. character who's like a two-time Super Bowl winner. And her storyline is that she falls in love too quickly, so she's pushing him away and he keeps calling her, which is very predictable that when they end up not being able to get into the Super Bowl and they get kicked out, that he's going to come in handy. And he does. They get him into... He has access to like a box in the stadium. Mm -hmm. Then uh, Rita Moreno's character, she with Sally Field end up getting high and... I think she has a fun scene where she ends up walking into like a secret poker game, like a mm -hmm. charity poker game with Billy Porter. Yes. Who's Lady, Lady Gaga's choreographer. Choreographer, choreographer named Goo Goo. Goo Goo. And he says she got her name from him. Goo Goo Gaga. Like, okay. Uh, you know, Billy Porter kind of rubs me the wrong way nowadays. But that scene was kind of cute. She wins like the tournament and she thinks she can w take this money to buy real tickets. Or new tickets that have been lost. But then she finds out it's charity, so she has to donate it all. And, but she gives it to Billy Porter's charity. And that's why he ends up helping them in the end get into the Super Bowl. Probably the crunchiest scene of the movie to me is when Billy Porter's helping them get into the Super Bowl stadium. Because he's trying to convince a security guard that they're dancers. And then they have this impromptu dance sequence that is crunchy. No, and then the good. reaction from the security guard was like... Not good. Bad comedy. <laughs> that writing was not good. Mm -mm. But... These women deserve better. 
But overall, I, I, I do think that many people will enjoy it. I did. I mean, I'm willing to pay for it and go see it again. It was much more enjoyable than I was predicting, considering that I really do adore all four of these women. But they're, they're uh, ensconced in something I'm so completely uninterested in. It's like, okay. But that said, I also didn't feel at any point kind of alienated by the football aspect of it uh, to where I was even bored, really. Right. And since I'm known for talking about hair and makeup, you know, I got to. I mean, Sally Field looks great. Fantastic. And she's not wearing any makeup. She looks fantastic. Rita Moreno, beautiful. Has aged naturally. You know, Lily Thomas has some work done. She sure has. And it's, you know, I'm sure, you know, I'm hope, I hope she's happy with it. Jane Fonda, though. Her character is supposed to be like the sex bomb and we see her in and out of makeup and wigs like she's, you know, she's revealing all, which she also did in Grace and Frankie. We mm-hmm. see her take off the tapes and the wig, mm-hmm. but I don't know if this is deliberate, but her hair and makeup are so bad. It's so bad. The makeup is so bad. It's so heavy. And then, of course, this HD shit blurs it. So and then she's snatched. They don't have eyelashes on her. The, the 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 lip colors are off and then these synthetic wigs with these hard hairlines <clears throat> that are too like i mean she didn't have one good wig on and then no. when we get the no when, when we get the scenes from like 20 years prior they try to make them look younger and they put jane fonda on like this dark brown wig that looks terrible i just don't understand i mean it's still i actually like this movie better than book club Okay. Which they were, are, are, there's a sequel that's been shot to that as well. But yeah, and I do really like watching her on screen, but she was, of these four ladies in this film, the least interesting, yeah. the least interesting plot line. And like, I understand that maybe her character is supposed to seem like a floozy. I don't know why she needed to. And they make her dress like, I, I, if they live in New England, I don't know why she's dressed like, she looked very like old Texas Sure. Lady, like, who still thinks she's young. Like, her, the way they styled her so off to me. Um, but yeah, I, I I would really love to hear from, like, the, like, the team who made that decision to make her look like that. Because her character has, like, we see her in her bedroom and she has, like, a vanity filled with beauty products. And she has, like, 20 wigs lined up. Yeah. And those wigs all look like they cost between $30 and $50. Yeah. So it's like, okay, if you take the 20 for the $30, $50 you paid, you could buy two really nice human hair lace front wigs. Mm -hmm. So I just don't understand why they make her look like this. And also... I don't don't know if it was because they wanted to make her seem tacky, though. And they do. She does look tacky, but I just don't get why a woman like her... Because she's supposed to be like an all-beauty queen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she used to be the girl on the commercial. Like doing like the car dealer commercials. So I feel like she would have aged differently. Like she would dress differently if she's from New England. Anyway, that's a rant. But I feel like people want me to say that. Um, a whole bunch of other people. And Sally Kirkland is a nursing home residence, uh, a resident. Uh, yeah. Jimmy O. Yang is the manager at the residence where Rita yeah. Moreno lives. Um Besides Sarah Gilbert and Harry Hamlin, there's also Ron Funches. This is the security guard. That's that, right. Security guard that has a vendetta against the, getting yep. them kicked out of there. Um, of course, and Billy Porter. Uh, yeah, an interesting cast. What people. would you give this film? Two and a half. Uh, and also, the very, the very first scene, I I never I almost never think this about watching a film, especially with that's showcasing all these women. I was like, would this film pass the Bechtel test? Because they almost are always, except for maybe the exposition about Lily Tomlin's past battle with cancer, are almost always obsessively dealing with men, particularly Tom Brady. It's, it, which is I mean, I guess no, because the, I mean, the main plot line is that they're obsessed with this man. But I do feel like as a group, there are scenes where they're talking about each other and what they mean to each other. Sure, but those are really few and far between. It probably does... Pass, it would pass yeah. because there are moments when they're talking not about men and how they relate to each other. But like, yeah, I would say the essence of the film, it's like 80% of it is revolving around either Tom Brady or Jane Fonda and how she she's too quick to like want to fall in love with men. Sally Field. Sally Field and her husband. Rita Moreno and her dead husband. How she's obsessed with her dead husband. And then, the, yeah, and then, 
Yeah, and then Lily Tomlin is constantly... We didn't mention, or I didn't mention, that she's talking to Tom Brady like... We see him talking back to her, like, through his bobblehead, through, like, Jumbotron. Mm -hmm. Like, he's literally looking at her, like, you can do this, don't give up. So she's very preoccupied with this man. So it's interesting. It's interesting. Uh, yeah, but so two and a half is my score. I would give it three out of five. I thought it was good. Anything else? No. Hit the thanks button. Listen to our podcast. Bye. <laughs>